Hey everyone, welcome back to Crypto Cash. Thank you so much again for joining me here. Hope you're having a great day. Happy Friday to you. Let's take a look here once more again at Bitcoin, see what's going on. Uh, 88,300 on its way down here from 91K. So uh, as we kind of talked about previously, that $91,000 range is somewhat of a resistance uh, between 90 and 91. Um, again, there's a handful of reasons for that. But the truth is the price came up there to basically destroy some uh, some late shorts likely, and then of course pull back here as per usual. So we're seeing this happen time and time again, where the you know it's just a very tumultuous ride. So the overall sentiment here is that we're still tentatively bearish on the shorter term time frames. Macro is still getting close to breaking bearish, but not quite there yet. And overall, uh, we just kind of kind of presume the price is going to go down uh, unless it doesn't. All right, I know it sounds kind of crazy and weird, but the truth is um, we're in a situation right now where it's very likely we're going to see further downside just based on you know lower highs, lower lows, a lot of just you know distinct uh, you know standard uh, patterns and indicators kind of letting us know that. Okay, so just keep in mind um, it's good to be bullish in some ways, but also not in others. Right now is a really weird thing when when you're in a transition when Bitcoin is starting to top out or just say giving us signs of reversal. Uh, there's obviously fake outs that can occur, but there's also likelihood of continuation. So the odds of success going up right now is lower than the odds of success going down. Okay, that's just kind of how it is right now. It doesn't mean that I love it or hate it. It's just it is what it is. All right, that's just kind of how trading is. You got to learn to roll with the ebbs and flows of trading. So let's take a look here. This is the last uh, 12 hours on the left hand side here. Give you a quick perspective on what's going on uh, in the overall sense here within the last 12 hours. We can see 86.5 upwards to 87.5. That's still that area that I've um, you know I've talked about previously being a potential area of liquidation. Um, and again, the price did come down pretty pretty far. Uh, you can't see it here. Let's go ahead and pull it up on the uh, seven day. But when we we have a take, it's funny. We had a take profit target at 86,700. No, 86.6, and the price came down to 86.7. So it's super close to uh, hitting profits, but the, the key takeaway here is that there's a chunk of liquidation between 86.6 and 85K, even a larger bit uh, just below 84. So I do think that if we do uh, kind of breach that $86,000 range, there's more likelihood of further downside because that's somewhat of a support level for us. And I'll talk about that here in a minute. When we look at the macro here, we're starting to see more volume, uh, you know, accumulate as far as liquidation is concerned. But uh, no, no major areas of concentration except for that eighty-six five. That's a good round number for it. So eighty-six thousand five hundred. There's, you know, somewhere in the range of three to four billion just at that one little area alone. So definitely a chunk. Now when we look at the liquidation delta here, this is actually very, very calming <laughs> to see this happen because it was what was it? It was at thirty-five billion. Um, in liquidation delta longs at one point. Now we're, we're tapering off. We're down to this, uh, you know, six to eight billion. It basically just implies that we've had enough liquidations and or longs having secured profits by now that the likelihood of um, of the price going going up is greater because of that. I know it seems kind of weird that this coming down is a good thing, but the truth is with less longs in the market, there's less potential for sporadic behavior and for the charts to actually do what they're supposed to. Uh, anyways, let's take a look here. We can see open interest. We can recognize, again, most people are invested heavy at 90000 89700 uh, which isn't too far off, honestly. So I, I totally get it. Uh, you know, the price was just above that a moment ago. Now it's back down below. Like what the heck is Bitcoin doing? <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a very neurotic uh, beast right now. So uh, the either way you look at it here, there's a lot of interest in the range of just say 87 to 91k as an easy way to understand it. And we look here too. Let's go ahead and kind of zoom out a little bit here. This is just a quick little snapshot of the 15 minute time frame. We can see we have the largest amount of volume, which is a tentative support level for us. Again, that 87,800. You could just round up and say. 88k is that that key level support based on uh, you know volume. So we may actually see the price pivot and bounce from here, but the odds that are, are lower simply because we're still respecting our descending trend line and until we establish higher highs and higher lows, that is going to continue. That's pretty much how how that works. You're supposed to presume the price will continue in its trend until the trend is broken. Okay, trend isn't broken yet. All right, so daily time frame, everything's still going to look bullish. All right. So do not mistake the daily time frame for just taking along because the price is you know, because it's looking good. Um, you want to take everything else with a grain of salt, or take this with a grain of salt, and add everything else into the equation. Okay, this is only like a third or a quarter of the overall sentiment, and it's important to recognize some things before we move on here that there is a fair value gap between eighty-two k and eighty-five thousand. So 
Heaven forbid the price comes down, I would see, I could totally see a candle wick down to 82,000 and then recover from there, okay? Just know that that exists. It doesn't mean that you have to trade solely based on that one thing. But the truth is most fair value gaps are filled in over time, right? Uh, so it's slightly concerning considering there is another one down in the 70K range. Uh, to touch on this too, before I forget, there is a CME gap that also is unfilled. These are super common to, to, get, uh, to get filled at some point or another. Okay. It may not be now, it could even be months or years from now if the price just keeps going up. Um, but you know, when we establish our new low officially, we'll see that get filled too. Either way you look at it, it seems kind of crazy and weird that that's actually a thing, but the price moved up so fast over a weekend that there's a lot of profits left to be secured down to that level. And majority of, of, of profits are gonna be the market makers. They're the ones that are in profit right now and it's a very beneficial situation for them. So having said that, 77, basically 78K upwards of 80.5 is that CME gap, just so you can be mindful and aware that that's there. So four hour time frame. Uh, just to clarify again, we got this $84,000 uh, you know, golden pocket. So hypothetically, the price continues lower here and breaks 86.5 as a round number. We could see 84 to 83K as the next potential stop. That's kind of, there's not a lot of volume there. It would make sense for the price to kind of continue lower to that next step, that next leg down. Uh, we take a look here, of course, for our time frame, we're still maintaining above 50 in the RSI. This is generally favorable. Money flow index is increasing too. We're seeing money flowing back into Bitcoin. And if you do kind of zoom in, you can see that we are essentially, you know, establishing higher lows and tentative higher highs. So I'm, 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 uh, I, I don't like to emphasize that because you can, you know, some people hear what they want to hear. They're like, oh, wait, cash said uh, just go, to go along because we have higher highs now. No, that's not the case. <laughs> the overall trend is still down. We're under the 20-day SMA. There's a lot of reasons why we, we shouldn't take a long into this. I would say if we close soundly above 90K, then that's a different story altogether, right? 90,000 is kind of that, that major level. I'm rounding up a little. It's more like 89.7, but that's the area we'll want to kind of pay attention to. Okay, so until we break free from that range or we break below 86.5 as a round number, then we're gonna just presume the price is gonna be range bound in that in that level, in that, in that area, okay? So that's how it works when you when you trade. You, um, you don't wanna be a breakout trader and be like, take it along right now with the expectation it's gonna break that resistance. Let it break it first, and then we'd go, we move from there. That's how that's supposed to work. Again, again just, just best practice I'm trying to impart on you because I've got, while I've got a lot of new community members that came over to our, uh, to our Discord and our, our, our Signals group, um, it's, it's important to recognize that these people probably had a very, very bad experience and it's very frustrating to know that uh, you know, they're, they're in a situation they're in right now because of it. Anyways, um, let's talk about the hourly and call it a day here. Just to wrap up, each mogul cloud is working like a champ. As soon as the price broke down, it's, it's pretty much pre presumed bearish on the shorter term timeframes. Um, we came up here to retest this descending trend and the upper lead on the cloud held like a champ as per usual and the price is continuing lower. So again, that's all the more reason why we need a $90,000 close or higher to put us back over the cloud to give us confirmation the uptrend still continues. For right now, we got to presume the price will continue lower. That's why I love the Ichimoku Cloud. My, uh, you know, I get the question a lot in my community, you know, why do you use this indicator so often? Well, it's a very, very good trend reversal tool and it's helpful to understand what side of tracks you're on. Okay? And for right now, we, just, we know that we're moving down. We don't know how far down, how many uh, aggressive candle wicks to the upside or downside we're going to see. But the overall sentiment is moving in the downward direction. Okay, so so you generally want to trade in in the, the direction that the the trend is moving, right? If you're going to be a try to you know be a breakout trader right now, you got to wait for the price to break out first. Okay, <clears throat> that's the only problem with breakout trading is most of the time they, they take longs into key level resistances and and shorts into key level supports. It, it's not it's not wise to do that. That's that's kind of a, a bad idea. So. Either way you look at it here, um, the overall sentiment here is down as far as the shorter term and uh, midterm timeframes are concerned. While the macro is still screaming bullish convergence and letting us know that we're still on the way up, it moved up so strong and so fast that those, those, those averages, those indicators are flawed for the moment. You wanna focus on smaller timeframes, uh, such as the four hour and the hourly, those work really well for me, and just kind of pay attention to that. At this point though, you do gotta recognize we have seen higher lows and higher highs on smaller timeframes with the exception of not breaking through those key level resistances. So 
again, when you're in a transition like this, the best thing to do is to not trade. But if you are going to insist on a trade, you will likely find more success shorting than taking a long at this exact moment. All right, I hope that changes and the price goes to 100K and, and plus. Uh, that'd be just fine for our spot bags, right? But between now and then, be very careful with leverage, okay, folks? Um, to give you perspective and just complete uh, you know, transparency here, we have a short open with AVAX. We took 21% on that. Uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum short as well. We're almost to our target on Ethereum at 3,007, um, and Bitcoin isn't too far behind, so we're averaged in pretty nicely. Either way, thanks again for your time. We'll look forward to seeing the next one. I'll post our playout chart on our Twitter, Telegram, and Discord soon. Have a good rest of your day. Take care.